Hey y'all, Juliana from Alabama, and today is Moving Day! Something really cool I need to show you guys before we get into Moving Day. Guys, it's the craziest thing. So Blake came down in his truck and a bird had built a nest underneath his truck. And... I'll show you. All the babies fell out. They made it all the way down the interstate and all the babies fell out. And we hijacked another mama bird's nest that was on my porch. And she's taking care of them. There's three of them. The other mama bird's babies haven't hatched yet, so she's probably about to have six babies to feed. But at least they survived. Okay, all three are in the nest. Looks like Mama's taking care of them. Oh yay, I'm so glad that worked out. Because I did not have time to deal with three little teeny tiny baby birds when I've got all of this junk to move. Ain't that right, Ted? You ready to go move some goats? Let's go move some goats. I can't really show you where the nest was because it's too dark under Blake's truck. But it was like up in the carriage house up in there somewhere. Crazy, they made it all the way down the interstate, like a 60 minute drive down to here. Poor little birdies. Isn't that so good? Oh, I'm so glad it worked out. Anyway, today we are going to do one of probably four trips up to the new farm. Uh, I have to move the donkey and the goats first by themselves, get them settled in, and then tomorrow we'll be moving the horses, get them settled in, and then the next day I actually have hired movers because my job is actually paying for the move. Isn't that cool? Um, if you guys are wondering what profession you should go into, go into healthcare. It'll always find a job and they will always pay you good. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, the next day, on day three, we will move all the junk. Yesterday I took a load of like fencing materials and all my horse jumps and stuff in the trailer and I got stuck for almost three hours on the interstate because some idiot uh, turned over their camper over both of the lanes and blocked the lanes for three freaking hours. I was so glad I didn't have any animals with me. So today I'm going to check the route and make sure that I won't get stuck on the interstate for three hours with a bunch of animals in the back when it's 100 degrees. I would have been so upset. But anyway, let's get to it. We got the donkey whisperer. Got the donkey in the trailer. Good job. Time to release the hounds. Hey girls! You gonna come out? Are you gonna come out? <laughs> huh? Yeah. You're not gonna come. It took forever to get you in there. Now you're not gonna come out. What's the matter? It's okay. You're hey, you're okay. Just come on out. I'm back here. Come on out. Everybody out. Everybody out. I know. You gotta get out for Balaam to come out. Go on. There you go. Good girl. All right, watch out because he's loose. He's just gonna run free. Balaam. Down she go. Hey, it took forever to get them in here. Now they don't want to get out. Go on, Bubby. Go on. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Where'd the girls go? So we got all the goats except for one. We'll have to get him her tomorrow. Finally back at home and I got the lonely little goat straggler locked up in the chute now. Problem with this farm has always been that I don't have any real stalls at all so there's no way to really herd up the goats so I mean I feed them they're used to me but when I'm trying to get him them into a chute to get into a trailer that's kind of a different story but 
luckily I got her caught up. She was the only one that got loose, and once she got loose and didn't realize what we were doing, there was no catching her after that. So we just had to leave her by her lonesome. Um, luckily, I have a stallion kick guard in my trailer, um, in one of the dividers, so can put her in first, close that up, she'll be uh, secure in there, and then I can load up the two horses. It is a three horse, so that's lucky. Um, and then we can take them all tomorrow if she will cooperate. If you want to be back with your herd, you got to come with me. So, oh, that was the day today. Huh. You're a little heifer. All you had to do was get in the trailer. Now you're by yourself with guns going off in the distance. Welcome to Alabama. So this is actually their run-in, which is usually wide open. I've kind of just like ghetto rigged some panels tied with a rope. Um, so that's where you're gonna spend the night the night. You got hay and leaves and food and lots of flies. I know, it sucks. I bet you wish you could go stay the night in the woods like you normally do. Mm-hmm. This is Ethel. She's always the troublemaker. You should be more like your sister Lucy. Lucy's actually a lot better behaved than you. Yes. I've actually never done a proper tour of this place. So before I move for good, y'all want to see kind of just the gist of it. Let's do it. So this is the arena. We moved all the jumps a couple days ago, but I had jumps in it. And I'm really, really, really going to miss these lights. It had lights in it, which are already here. This is the run-in shelter where Ethel is spending the night. It is split between the horse fields and the goat fields, so they split it in half and share it. Um, it does have a great big barn, but there's no stalls in the barn. So the barn has always been hay storage and I would park my trailer under here because it's got this great big garage door. So it's just a great big open space. It's where you park the trailer, hay was over there, and just random stuff. And then this is just storage space where, where I keep my mower and some implements that the mower can pull. Um, I've never had a tractor. I've always just had this 60 inch deck X mark, which does a phenomenal job with the fields as long as you don't let a bunch of seedlings or saplings grow up in it. So I've never needed a tractor and I got little implements that it can pull like a sprayer and a spreader and a little box grater. So this is the horse area. That's about five acres and this is about two acres. And then there's another run-in barn over there, which is where I've always fed the horses. And the house is up there. So yeah, I'm gonna miss it. It's about 13 acres in all. That goat field was about five acres and then the arena. Um, Moon Spinner, my very first horse is buried under these two trees. And then I had a little miniature horse that passed away as well. I'll go into greater detail some other day about what happened to those two is buried actually on the other side of that fence on the other side of these two trees so they're kind of buried sort of side by side under those two trees so yeah I kind of hate to leave them behind and I hope those two trees always stand um, it's always been a little reminder to me that they were sorry let me flip you guys around but these two trees have always been like a standing reminder to me that they were best friends. It's a little miniature and um, a big 16.2 or 16.3. Oh no, he's a big guy. Big thoroughbred. My first two horses I ever owned. And they're buried side by side and their two trees are standing by si side by side and they're up in heaven side by side. That's probably the most bitter part about leaving this property is leaving them behind. But I know they're with me. Are you going to be a troublemaker moving? Is there a reason you're laying in the mud? Kika! <gasps> Hi, Ted! We're moving! Ted's excited to move. You get a pond to play in. Yeah! You excited? Yes. Kitty cat, you better not cause trouble. I know, you're so mad at me. I'm sorry. 
So I was worried. This is Goober Kitty, my barn cat, and he's never been inside before. And I was worried when he saw us moving all the animals, he wouldn't come to me. So I've set him up a little, a little shelter in here in the bathroom. Oh, I gotta get the toilet paper down. I'll make a big toilet paper mess. We can't waste toilet paper at times like these. So I got him a little bed and some food, some kitty litter in the shower. He's really mad and really confused. I know, moving so stressful, I hate it. But um, I've got this little cage for him. Gonna try to keep him in here for a day or so before we move him and get him used to this cage so that when we get to the new house, say hi. Oh, that's you. That's you in the mirror, yes. That's Goober Kitty. So when we get to the new house, I can uh, get keep him in this cage and get him acclimated to the new place before just setting him free because he can't just set a cat free in a new place on the first day or you'll run away won't you when I love you he's a really good mouser he's a good little barn kitty playing up say what is this place so hopefully it'll work out he's a good cat I've had him for two years now and I hope he acclimates fairly well so say a little prayer for us over the next couple of days. Moving is very stressful when you're moving an entire farm, especially the dogs whining outside. He can't come in. Alrighty, so it's the next day and it's horse moving day and check out what happened. Wah, 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 flat tire. I don't know why I expected anything less today. I've changed many a flat tire on a trailer, but instead of struggling to change it, I'm actually going to just go really slow and limp it over to a tire store I've used before that's only like two hours away and let them deal with it. Luckily, I have a very good spare tire, so even if they can't fix that tire, we can use a spare. And hopefully they can order another one, which is usually what they have to do because they never have the right tire in stock. But, oh well. So goes life. Oh, and I forgot to mention there's a tropical depression coming through, so this will be fun. Okay, they could not save the tire. Of course not. So they're ordering me a brand new tire. Um, 80 more dollars later, I just got a brand new tire because I got a flat. I always hit crap with my trailer. I don't know why. I've never had a blowout, thankfully. Um, but anyway, so got the trailer back in the chute. Gonna try to load the stupid straggler goat Ethel and load up the horses and get out of here before it starts monsooning. Couple recommendations for you guys. When you're trailering, always check your tires. Be sure you know how to back up a trailer really good because I had to back up into a pretty narrow spot at the trailer store. I actually impressed some people because they were like, you want me to back it for you? I'm like, bitch, please. I know how to back my trailer. So if you're new, to trailer driving, find yourself a big old field, put out some poles, and practice backing up at different angles through the poles. Highly recommend it, that's how I learned. And always check your tire pressure, and always know how to change a spare. Always have a spare, thankfully I had a good spare. Uh, costs a lot of money to maintain trailer tires, so be prepared for that. And, oh, another little tip, trailer tires, Unless you get a special kind, they are only um, rated to go 65 miles an hour down the interstate. So I think a lot of people get blowouts because they go 70, 80 miles an hour and it makes the trailer tire too hot and then they blow a tire. I've never had a blowout. I never go above 65 to 70. Anyway, please excuse the mess. Um, it was really cloudy today and I didn't feel like throwing this up into a hat and... I'm really stressed out and I really don't care how I look in public. Or on YouTube, apparently. Okay, I'm gonna load up this goat and the horses and get out of here. Alright, success! We got her! Sorry, it's really dark in here because it's raining and we're under shelter. But see, so this trailer has the, uh, it's called a stallion kick guard, so she'll be safe over there. And then I've got two more slots that the horses will go in and we'll head out! Success!
Genius. Comet's a little nappy looking because I had to put them in the trailer wet. It was raining at my old house. Luckily it hasn't rained here yet, so what I'm gonna do is the goats and the donkey are over here. I'm gonna back the trailer up to their gate and let the goaty girl out. So horses will spend the night in this field, goats will spend the night in that field. Um, and I won't let them out into the other field until a little bit later. All right, donkey and goats are coming, so let's get this girly out. Look at Ethel, you ready? How'd you travel? I'll go show you. It's not quite ready yet. We got our dangling hanging. That means we're home. He does that every single time I bring him home. Marking your territory, I guess. Letting it all hang out. Hear it out there. Yeah. It looks like Ethel, which is this one, is happy to be home with her crew. And little baby Sophia is doing good. If you don't follow me on Instagram, then you would not know, but somebody dropped off a little baby injured goat at my house, showed up on my front uh, porch steps, and usually little baby goats do not separate from their families, especially for miles, um, so I think somebody didn't know how to care for her and they just dropped her off. Um, but she's doing good. She's all incorporated into the herd and now we're at our new lovely home. They got plenty of little saplings to clear out. This field will look worlds different. They will clear everything out that they can reach. See how they get on their hind legs like that. So they do a really good job raising the canopy of trees. Yeah, good goats. Here's just a little update of the inside. If you guys saw my I Bought Farm tour, you'll remember that this whole house was like an ugly yellowy color. So we had it painted, it's called Revere Pewter. I think it looks really nice. And we got a new floor in here, the washroom. <coughs> That'll be the view of the barn, minus the bobcat. They're doing some excavation work on the barn. And then in here, we got a new tub. Yay, the old tub in here was like some sort of puke pea green color. So we got a new tub, new faucet head, and a new throne. And then here is the view outside of the front door. The ponies and the goaties. Not too shabby of a view. I want to show you guys real quick all of the progress we've done to the barn. If you remember in my video of buying this farm, where I'm standing there used to be this old shed that was just like chock full of termites. So we had it torn down and drug away. This is where that used to be. Uh, got some wires we got to cap off and bury in the ground and then we built a new fence here so that will be the arena eventually and I just brought all my junk I got 
some cattle panels and my horse jumps and stuff. And then this stuff is amazing. I think it's called 1810, but it's like super duper finely um, meshed gravel. Um, I don't know how else to explain it, but like the biggest piece of it is like no bigger than your pinky nail. I was going to get slag put in the barn, but we decided actually on this crushed gravel instead. It's not even really gravel, I'll just call it like crushed limestone. But I'll show you how it's looking in here. Big improvement in here. World, world, world's different than that original video I showed you guys. So he's built up the level in here. And then he's put all this, um, I think it's called, it's either 810 or 1810. But see, it just packs down. Um, so you come in with a roller and you pack it down and it turns almost into like a concrete type finish. And he's also put this tin around the edge of the barn to prevent the bottom boards from rotting away. So he'll finish out leveling the stalls and then he's going to put the same stuff in the center aisleway. And once it packs down real tight, it almost makes like a concrete aisleway. So I'm super excited about that. It's looking way, way better. And then, I'm, of course, I'm going to get rubber mats put in here. And eventually, we're going to cut out some windows and make some better uh, stall walls. So I don't know if you guys remember, but this used to just be a giant mud pit. So he's built it up and made some French drains and put some gravel in. And I don't know if I'll have the money to do it, but I would love to get that crushed rock in their run-ins. But currently the horses won't have access to these run-ins yet. He said he's still got, I don't know, another week or so if the weather will hold up uh, to finish the barn off before I can let the horses have access to this barn. But eventually they'll have access of the whole entire area and they'll be able to come into this nice lovely run-in. And yeah, it'll be good. Super excited. So here's now the front of the barn and we got some gutters put in that come down into the French drain. And here's the second run-in. So there's one on this side and one on that far side and then there's also a little chicken pen. Um, so probably within a week or so the horses will have access to this area of the property. Got a lot of stuff I need to unpack out of the truck and then got to go home and pack up some more stuff and the movers are coming tomorrow to move all of my junk in and you probably aren't really interested in seeing any of that. Sorry, Look at what this asshole did. That's a snake, if you can't tell. And he has three lumps in his belly. He ate the little baby birds that made it all the way down the interstate that we saved. Oh my gosh. I'm so upset. I can't believe it. You asshole. What a jerk. We got all of my stuff moved in and me and Goober are hanging out on the porch. Goober the kitty says hi. He's less stressed out. We got him this little kennel that he can hang out with when we, blah, blah, blah. if I could talk, we got him this little kennel that he can hang out in when we are outside and he can start getting acclimated to his new surroundings and he'll stay spending the night inside with us. And this is my view from my front porch. Not too shabby. Hi Goober, you like your new digs? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am so exhausted and I still have an entire house to unpack. He might roll. <laughs> Do you love it? Is this your favorite spot? Yep, yep. Oh my goodness. He might. <laughs> Oh, you have fun? Oh, thanks, Buck. 
That's, that's what we wanted in the pond is a bunch of horse poop. Here for the first time and guess what we woke up to in the morning. Ugh, it was awful. So this whole room is the washroom and it used to have a hot water heater right there. And we moved the hot water heater out to the garage so that we'd have more room in the laundry room. So there's a the hot water heater now. And the plumbers that did the job did not secure this line correctly and it came undone in the wall. And it flooded the entire half of the house, including the master bedroom, which we didn't have set up yet. So we stayed in a bedroom on the other end of the house. But the thing that really sucked about it, I was keeping my poor little cat in here until he can be acclimated to the new place and be released as the barn cat, was in here as it was flooding water out of the wall. When we opened the door, he was sitting on top of the, this was closed. Poor kitty was sitting on top of the washroom screaming. We opened the door and he like flew out and hid under the couch and it took forever to get him out. <sighs> it was a disaster. Total freaking disaster. But the good news is it was a pipe that they messed up and you can't tell but the flooring is all buckled and screwed up over here. So their insurance will likely pay for a whole new floor of the whole house. So we have just moved all of our furniture in here just to have it shoved around and get a whole new floor. But wait, there's more. For the low, low price of likely $150 to $300, you can have not one major plumbing problem, but an additional minor plumbing problem to round out your day. So I'm at the old farm. And we've had this problem in this exact same spot before. There's a cutoff valve. The pipe comes in this way. For whatever reason, this pipe keeps getting cracked. My darling, 